Uh, it's a collaboration between the Zimbabwe Ministry of Health and Child Care, uh, the University of Zimbabwe Department of Community Medicine, and the uh, President's Emerging Plan for AIDS Relief and the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention here in Zimbabwe. Uh, this is a list of uh, collaborators. I'm not going to go through them, but uh, uh, you, you know uh, when, you, when you're up there. So thanks uh, to all of, uh, of the team that's been involved with this for the last two years. Uh, the funding comes from, from uh, again, from PEPFAR. Um, so in terms of background for this particular study, uh, in resource-constrained countries like Zimbabwe, but many other countries in uh, Africa and Asia, uh, sexually transmitted infections are treated syndromically. Um, and periodic surveys are necessary to determine the current etiology of most prevalent STIs. And when I talk about STIs in this context, we're talking basically about genital discharge syndromes among uh, women, vaginal discharge syndrome, and men, urethral discharge syndrome, as well as genital ulcer disease among both men and women. Um, these etiologic studies are very important because they ultimately inform the development of STI syndromic treatment guidelines. Um, so for example, these are the um, STI treatment guidelines uh, for uh, Zimbabwe that have been recently updated uh, and uh, are, are in current use. So um, when we talk about syndromic STI management, uh, basically what that entails for the discharge syndromes, again for vaginal discharge and urethral discharge, the treatment needs to cover uh, infections with uh, Neisseria gonorrhea, which typically is done through intramuscular injections of ceftriaxone, or here in Zimbabwe, canamycin, uh, and also coverage for chlamydia trachomatis through doxycycline or azithromycin. In women, um, we also want to cover for trichomoniasis um, through metronidazole, thank you, um, and bacterial vaginosis uh, also through a week's uh, 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 course of metronidazole. On the other hand, we have genital ulcer disease, and their treatment, uh, treatment package covers uh, infections with treponema pallidum, which is syphilis, uh, Haemophilus decrae, or chancroid, and herpes simplex virus. And it is important that we distinguish these, as we will uh, uh, point out later on, to sort of see uh, how appropriate these syndromic STI managements are, uh, particularly within the uh, context of Zimbabwe. So to give you a background about the STI burden in Zimbabwe, where we have syndromic reporting, uh, overall there's close to 300,000 new STI cases uh, that are reported, uh, almost 100,000 women with vaginal discharge, about 50,000 men with urethral discharge, genital ulcer disease, 50,000 for men and women, there's 40,000 cases of pelvic inflammatory disease and other STIs, including uh, things like genital warts and so forth, is 60,000. Um, and of course, you know, this is really the tip of the proverbial iceberg. Uh, where only those that are symptomatic and reported are basically coming to our attention, but the large um, um, group of asymptomatic and, and not reported cases are obviously much larger, and we have really no clear idea about what the actual burden of STIs would be in this country. So the objectives of our study uh, is to determine the etiology of STI syndromes among a sample of men and women uh, who present with STIs in a regional diverse sample of clinics in Zimbabwe, and to secondly explore the association between STI syndromes, their etiologic agents, and, uh, and also HIV infection in the population. So in terms of methods, um, we are enrolling, and actually we just completed an enrollment uh, of 600 patients, 200 women with uh, vaginal discharge, 200 men with urethral discharge, and 200 men or women with genital ulcer disease. And we uh, had a, um, a kind of a selective approach where we went to clinics uh, where we know that uh, high numbers of STIs are being reported from. Um, so this is not a random sample. This is really a purpose of, of a sampling uh, scheme where we went to two clinics in Harare, in Mumbari and Budiriro, in Bulawayo at the Kulamane and Kami Road clinics, and then in Bitebridge at the Dili Badzimu clinic, and then in rural Gutu, uh, which is close, anywhere between Masfingo and Harare at the Gutu Road Clinic. I want to point out that the Bitebridge Clinic in, in, especially is important because it's right on the border uh, between Zimbabwe and, and uh, um, 
uh, and South Africa, and so there's lots of truckers and, uh, and sex workers active in that particular area, and the clinic that we uh, enrolled our patients from is, is a, uh, a small sort of container-based clinic that's right on the border. So here's a map of Zimbabwe, so here's Harare, uh, Bulawayo in the southwest, and here's Bridge on the border, and here is Gutu. <laughs> Uh, just a, a couple of slides from from the uh, uh, from the team here. This is in uh, in, in, um, uh, in Kulamane Clinic in, in Bulawayo. This is the Kami Road Clinic uh, in Bulawayo as well. So the way that we did this, we had a a mobile team of three trained nurses uh, that visited the clinic sequentially. So they started in Harare. When they were done in Harare, they went to Bulawayo, then they were done in Bulawayo, and they went to Bybridge and Gutru. And so what they did was they enrolled the patients, and then they collected questionnaire data on demographics, STI, HIV history, risk behaviors. Uh, they took blood samples for HIV serology of all the patients, uh, at least those patients that, um, um, that agreed to be HIV tested. Uh, syphilis serology was taken for all. And then specimens were taken for gram stain from male and female discharge patients. Uh, urine was taken for, uh, for, for men. And vaginal swabs were taken for, um, uh, from all women regardless of symptoms. And then a swab of the ulcerations was, was taken for men and women with genital ulcer disease. So um, then... These specimens and the questionnaire data were shipped to a local receiving laboratory here at, uh, at uh, the Sichiri uh, lab at Wilkins. And uh, from there, these uh, specimens were um, uh, basically shipped out to different laboratories. And so this is a listing of all the laboratory tests that we did. So for all the patients, so including the patients with uh, genital ulcer disease, uh, we did PropTech, which is a, a nucleic acid amplification test for gonorrhea and chlamydia. And we were also lucky enough to uh, get support from Cefit, who uh, gave us cartridges for gene experts for gonorrhea and chlamydia as well. So we had, actually we had three platforms for gonorrhea and chlamydia because we also shipped our specimens to the uh, National Institute for Communicable Disease um, uh, Laboratory in Johannesburg, where a multiplex PCR was done for gonorrhea and chlamydia, as well as mycoplasma genitalium and trichomonas uh, vaginalis. So uh, we had three platforms for gonorrhea and chlamydia, which was basically done to look at the local capacity and build local capacity uh, for testing for these particular um, uh, infectious agents. But it gave us a very nice way of, of comparing the results, and uh, some of that will be presented by uh, Dr. Ndoa in the next presentation. So for the genital ulcer disease patients, we also did the multiplex PCR, also in Johannesburg, and we're, here we looked for syphilis, T. pallidum, Haemophilus decray, uh, chlamydia trachomatis, um, and the LGV trains, uh, strains of, of C. trachomatis and herpes simplex virus. Uh, then in terms of serology, we did rapid tests for HIV uh, using the standard uh, algorithm here in, in country, basically starting with a determine then if that was positive, a first response, and then a chem bio as a tiebreaker. Uh, for syphilis, we used the SD BioLine Duo rapid test for the treponemal tests, and then the RPR was done for non-treponemal tests. Um, so where are we? Um, well, we're, we're getting there. We're getting very excited about the results. Uh, first of all, our enrollment is, is actually it is complete. We have 600. Uh, the last 10 uh, have not been uh, included in this slide. And you can see that we have a very nice sort of uh, uh, spread between the different clinics. Um, and also from those clinics, we have a good, uh, uh, merge, uh, good smattering of, of folks that have the different STI syndromes. Uh, we were not able to um, get a lot of patients from GUTU, and it was kind of expected as a smaller clinic, and uh, we just wanted to try it there, and uh, uh, we have about 10 or 15 patients that we, uh, we uh, were able to recruit there. But I think we have pretty good regional um, uh, representation, uh, which obviously, uh, down the road will enhance uh, uh, the, um, the uh, generalizability of our results. So this is looking at the, dis the different discharge syndrome. So we are close to 200. So we really, uh, the team was really doing very well in getting all the cells filled uh, as we had uh, proposed. So let's jump to the etiology of male and female discharge syndromes. And I have to point out here, and that's not necessarily immediately uh, clear from this clinic, that um, this is a relatively small proportion uh, of, of patients with the discharge syndrome simply because we don't have um, all the tests back yet from the uh, 
uh, from our reference laboratory in Johannesburg. Only a third has, uh, actually a quarter to a third has been done, and so we're waiting for the remainder of the results. But I think we can sort of uh, look at some patterns. So for male discharge, which is here in the orange bars, you can appreciate that there is a very high proportion of, uh, of men that actually come down with gonorrhea. So gonorrhea is, is sort of still the lead uh, cause of urethral discharge in men, uh, followed by um, chlamydia, about 13%, and there were a few men that had uh, trichomoniasis. Mycoplasma and genitalium didn't seem to be a very important contributor to urethritis in, uh, in men. For women, there's a very different pattern uh, here. As you would probably expect, uh, there's a very high proportion of women that come down with, uh, with bacterial vaginosis, uh, close to 32%. Yeast infections, uh, these were diagnosed, by the way, on, on the basis of gram stains, um, and Nugent scoring for BV, and then yeast uh, um, basically visualized on the gram stain, which is not a very sensitive method, I have to admit. So we did not do cultures for yeast. Then on the PCR for women, we see that relatively speaking, even though much lower than for men, uh, there's about 20% of women that have gonorrhea, about 9% that have chlamydia, 14.5% with uh, trichomoniasis, and 7% with mycoplasma genitalium. Uh, still small numbers, but I think that uh, I have a sense that this pattern will probably uh, persist throughout the other studies. It's going to be very interesting to see uh, and look at some of the regional differences. By the way, these are the samples that were done from the, uh, from the early clinic, so this is all Harari and Bulawayo. It's going to be very interesting to see what we'll find in Bite Bridge, you know, there in that border and see if the, uh, uh, if the epidemiology is very different there. As far as the etiology of male and female genital ulcer disease, again, the number is relatively small, only 70 uh, patients. Uh, we find herpes uh, uh, pretty commonly, uh, as was expected, maybe a little bit less common than we would have expected. And we're looking into this, whether we have some sen sensitivity problems on the, on the testing, and uh, we're having to run duplicate um, uh, 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 smears to, to, uh, to enhance these data. But anyway, for men, it's close to 30%. For women, it's about half that. Interestingly, though, uh, and probably not predicted, is that there is a relatively high proportion of syphilis among uh, male and female genital ulcer disease. It seemed like in recent years the syphilis had come down. But look here, about 15%. Uh, about 10 to 12 women here in this particular group had syphilis, primary syphilis, because you know this is looking at the treponema palm that was uh, was found in the lesion, uh, compared to about 8% uh, among men. There was one woman that had uh, an LGV strain of chlamydia trachomatis, and also importantly, there were no cases of Haemophilus ducreae, so there was no chancroid. Something that we've been finding for the uh, last decade or 15 years that uh, uh, chancroid, for whatever reason, seems to be on the decline. Um, so that's, those were the, the major findings, and so again, we have to expand on this because we, uh, we, we're still getting more results. I think this is a very important slide because it shows that uh, HIV was very high among our patients with SCI syndromes, uh, close to 31% on the male discharge patient. That was the lowest, and all the way to close to 57% uh, among female patients with genital ulcer disease. Um, this is uh, obviously very important, and uh, I, I will refer you to uh, Dr. Mongati's presentation tomorrow, who will give you a detailed analysis of our HIV findings and association with other STIs. Um, so here are some other things. We were able to look, actually, at syphilis testing among patients with uh, genital, genital uh, discharge disease we, by, by, by serology, and compared that to the serologies by genital ulcer disease. And we were finding that uh, about 7 8% of the, of the folks that have a genital discharge disease actually uh, have positive syphilis testing. So it is an important, it is a small group, but I think it's a very important group to look at because obviously a person with a genital di discharge syndrome is not covered for syphilis when they get syndromic management. Uh, this is also a very uh, interesting and I think an important slide in where we looked at gonorrhea and chlamydia, the rates by STI syndromes. And of course, I already showed you that it's very high among male discharge and female discharge. But look, um, especially when you look at men that had genital ulcer disease, close to 28% had either chlamydia or gonorrhea. And for women, it was almost 50%. So the women that have GUD are not really covered uh, by antibiotics that cover for chlamydia and gonorrhea, and I think that's a real problem. 
Um, so again, highlighting these, uh, these differences here. Actually, the amount of chlamydia and gonorrhea among GUD females and, uh, with genital ulcer disease was higher than among the women that had discharge. So in summary, uh, most of male genital discharge syndromes caused by gonorrhea. Uh, female genital discharge mostly by BV yeast and trichomoniasis. Gonorrhea is uh, very common and more common than chlamydia, even among those patients with genital ulcer disease. Um, herpes and syphilis are the most common cause of genital ulcer disease. No chancroid was found. And gonorrhea and chlamydia was common among patients with GUD and more common among women with uh, genital ulcer disease than women with discharge. And very high prevalence of patients with, uh, uh, of HIV in patients with SCI syndromes. Limitation to testing is not complete. Uh, the results are limited to patients from Harare and Bulawayo. By and large, only patients with symptomatic STIs are studied. I think we really need to start looking at patients that are high risk but are not symptomatic. And the selecting of patients in clinics that provide HIV care could have resulted in oversampling of HIV-infected patients. So in conclusion, there's numbers of conclusion, but I think the one that I really want to sort of uh, emphasize here is that our data do raise concerns about the appropriateness of syndromic management, particularly among patients with genital ulcer disease. And so we were asking yesterday whether Africa was ready uh, for um, hepatitis C treatment. Uh, I th my question is, is Africa ready for the etiologic treatment of STIs? And so with that, I would like to sort of uh, give it over to Francis, uh, my good colleague and friend, uh, Dr. Ndoa, who is going to answer that question. Thank you very much.